good hundred live in England. Six of them within 50 miles of Farnley. So? So it makes the threatening letters relevant, doesn't it? It's a connection. It's a bloody remote connection. Have you got a better one? Yes, Roland Sherman, Bailey's pet analyst. Lives near the prison, feeds Bailey his financial information. Someone called Sherman used to visit Bailey twice a week. Visitor's log. Popular man, Alex Bailey. The only person that doesn't visit him is his wife. This is good, Lewis. Really good. Why has Peter Thornton taken to visiting Bailey all of a sudden? Why was he lurking at Cry's inquest? Let's go and talk to him. No, no, you talk to him. I'll go and see Mrs. Bailey. Mrs. Bailey, my name is Morse, Chief Inspector, Thames Valley CID. I'm Mrs. Bailey. Mrs. Alex Bailey? Yes. I'd uh, like to talk to you about Lawrence Cryer, Mrs. Bailey. You knew him well? Well enough. I disliked him. He and my first husband were in business together at one time. The only thing I've got to thank Lawrence for is Alex. I don't follow. When my first husband died, Lawrence called round to pay his respects. Alex happened to be with him. Do you believe in love at first sight, Inspector? No, you're not the type, are you? Actually, I, I probably am. Well, I hope I am. Cryer made a lot of enemies in his career. Uh, are you aware of anyone in particular recently? I thought he was assaulted by one of his fellow prisoners at Farnley. What would I know about what goes on there? You don't visit your husband? No. It's, um... inconvenient. We speak on the phone every day. You don't know if your husband and Lawrence Cryer had quarrelled recently? Alex owes his career to Lawrence. I may not have liked him, but he was like a father to Alex. And Alex repaid him with complete loyalty. Then does Brian Thornton share your husband's loyalty? Oh, God. Does it never end? I loathe that company and everything associated with it. Brian Thornton? At the trial, Alex and Lawrence argued the same defence. Brian Thornton didn't. His son, Peter, persuaded him to plead ignorance. Well, it was nonsense, of course. Thornton knew what he was doing. And Lawrence could prove it. Peter Thornton was very bitter about it all. Not very pleasant, I suppose, watching your father cracking up floundering. So you'd say that Thornton is the one with the grudge against Cryer? I don't think Brian Thornton's new beliefs allow him to have grudges, Inspector. I'm not sure that extends to his son. Before you leave, Inspector, perhaps you'd let me give you something for Alex. Don't ask. What about Peter Thornton? I haven't got a hold of him. Neighbours say he's hardly ever in. The cracks are beginning to appear. I don't think the unholy trinity liked each other very much. Let's talk to their loved ones, starting with Emma Cryer. <laughs> Bailey's the key. 
Thornton's gone peculiar. Cryer's dying, so they all visit Bailey. Why? What has he got? He's got some threatening letters. Lewis, will you shut up about those? Yeah, look over there. Bloke from the prison. The one who always reckons he knows you. Charlie Bennett. Perhaps Mrs. Stevens lets petty criminals have the afternoon. He's not petty. He's a murderer. He's doing life for bashing his wife's head in. Go after him. I'll drive round. Are you all right? What the hell are you doing out? I'm allowed out. And you know. Thank you, Steve. Okay. They haven't run out of milk then? <coughs> no. Why should they? When are you due for release? Three weeks' time. They've been letting me out like this for a while. On parole. A few hours a day. Practice. I must have scared the life out of you. <laughs> Bit of excitement. <laughs> Sixteen years, all told. They moved me to Farnley four months ago at Easter. That's what you're wondering, wasn't it? How long I've been inside. First time I was out on my own, I lasted ten minutes. I had to go up an alley and throw up. Shaking like a leaf. Felt like running back, saying, let me back in, let me come home. Sixteen years. You can become accustomed to a way of life. It's almost as if I don't mind anymore. You don't mind what? Being innocent. I am innocent, boss. I didn't kill my wife. I came back that night. Tuesday the 4th of June. Just like I told Sergeant Frampton sixteen years ago. She was lying on the sitting room floor, her head covered in blood. Not me. It was a fair trial, Charlie. Tell me something. Why do policemen always call people like me by their first names when they don't believe them? 